Roberta Clowater says she's starting to wonder what it takes to get the government's attention. She says she and other ecologists and environmental groups have been asking the province to set aside large tracts of land and protect them from development, but they're not getting anywhere. This week, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, or CPAWS, issued its annual report calling Canada a laggard when it comes to protecting land and water, and it ranked New Brunswick second to last among provinces for its efforts. Roberta Clowater is executive director of the New Brunswick chapter of CPAWS, and she joins me in studio. Good morning. Good morning, Colleen. Second to last nationally. What isn't New Brunswick doing that has us so far behind? Well, uh, the first thing that New Brunswick isn't doing is that we don't have uh, an action plan to move forward. So the government hasn't made any commitment to establish any new protected areas, unlike most of the other provinces and territories in Canada that are working on a plan or have made a commitment to work on a plan. And so if without a commitment or a target or a goal, um, there's no action going on behind the scenes. What specifically do you want the province to do? I want the, I, well, CPAWS would like to see the province at least um, make a commitment to protect 10% of the province, which is the national average. And we think that's eminently reasonable amount to be protected, given that many provinces are actually uh, 12, 15, uh, much higher percentage of their province in, in protected areas. For example, how do we compare to Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia is uh, well above 12% of the province in protected, natural er in protected areas and parks and New Brunswick is at 4.7%. So Nova Scotia is three times the amount of protected area that we have, even though we have very similar histories and landscapes and uh, conservation issues and needs uh, to be addressed. So what's the problem? Why is it difficult to get the government's attention on the issue? There, there seems to be uh, an over-reliance upon the pressure that comes from industry, large industry in the province to pressure government to not have protected areas on Crown land. So the forestry industry and the mining industry have, have made strong efforts to push back against protected areas agenda in the province. Uh, and it seems to be holding a lot of sway with the politicians. Can you be more specific about that, about the companies that are doing it? <clears throat> well, it would be all the companies that everybody knows about. There are obviously some big actors uh, in the province that hold a lot of political influence. Are you talking specifically about the Irvings? I'm, I, I would say that the Irvings are not alone in pushing against protected areas, that all of the forestry companies are... Um, Whenever this topic comes up, then, then uh, the minister hears from those companies and, and it gets a lot of pressure, he or she, gets a lot of pressure to not take action on this file. So it's very concerning to me that that argument, which is a very old-fashioned, um, kind of outdated argument about jobs versus the environment, keeps holding so much p power here uh, because we're actually talking about now these are natural areas that protect all of our communities from the impacts of climate change. These are the natural areas that provide us with clean drinking water. These are the natural areas that help prevent flooding and that help moderate our temperatures and help provide pollinators habitat. And if we don't have any of those things, we're not going to have clean drinking water or food. And and we're going to be our our very livelihoods are going to be at risk due to flooding. So there are serious issues here that need to be addressed. It's not just about you know, is there habitat for bears or are we going to cut trees? It's much more nuanced than that. And I feel like this old argument is um, is just sticking around too long in New Brunswick. At the same time, jobs are important. Of course, jobs People are important. People have to work in this province and the resource industry has been a traditional employer in New Brunswick. For sure. It's uh, becoming less and less of a traditional employer. In fact, uh, if you looked at the tourism sector as a whole, it, it employs more people uh, than agriculture. What are those well-paying well jobs? They're different kinds of jobs. They are definitely different kinds of jobs. But I, I think that people who work in the tourism sector would say that they enjoy their jobs and they probably couldn't do the kind of jobs, you know, maybe there wouldn't be, that wouldn't appeal to them to go out and work in the mining sector or work in the forestry industry. So is to be no able to have to... some diversification of the economy is really important so that you have jobs for people of different stripes and skills and interests and also um, 
that there are trends related to nature-based tourism in North America, around the world, that the government of New Brunswick is missing the boat on because we aren't actually pr protecting the destination areas for those people to come back to to count on. And it makes it difficult for people who want to start a business in nature-based tourism to do that because it, how can they make an investment in a company, try to start up a business, employ people, and attract customers and tourists if they can't count on the area that they're taking those people to to still be wild and natural when they actually take them there. You mentioned in the report, or CPAWS mentions in its report, the need to look at the Restigouche Waterway. There are a list of, I believe, 10 across mm -hmm. the country, 10 areas, and the one place mentioned for New Brunswick is the Restigouche area. Yeah, well, there, there's been a proposal on the table for Restigouche Wilderness Waterway, either as a park or a protected area. For a number of years now and there's been work behind the scenes with local communities and local community groups and different government departments to explore this as an option. I think this is the er the early opportunity to get in there and do something before this 2020 um, deadline that the, that Canada has committed to comes up to us. Yes and can you mention a little bit more about that deadline that Canada has made a commitment <laughs> by 2020? Right. This is an international commitment. A lot, many, many countries around the world, lots of countries, most countries have committed to this 17% target to protect 17% of their countries in parks and protected areas uh, to basically halt the tide of uh, biodiversity loss around the world. And uh, Canada has done this. We now have a unique opportunity. In, in the last 15 years, um, we haven't seen this opportunity where the federal government, the provincial governments, the territorial governments are all working together on the, what they're calling pathway to 2020. And, and that includes Indigenous governments as well? Indigenous governments are involved um, in the ways that they want to be involved. And um, they're being involved as advisors, as technical experts, and as governments. Uh, so this is one of those areas where, you know, if this is, a, this is a moment in time that the government could seize and say, you know, we have to be able to go to these meetings, these national meetings, and report on progress. We have to say that we're doing something. We can't just be sitting here second to last in Canada and not make any forward movement. So uh, this would be the, the perfect political moment to say, okay, we're going to make a commitment. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to protect areas and we're doing it for all kinds of good reasons. There are economic benefits that can accrue to the tourism industry, and jobs won't be lost. They'll be built in different places, and we'll put ourselves in a better position to weather the storms of climate change. So what would we look like if we did that? What would the province mm -hmm. look like? Well, the province would have a lot more areas that could be destinations for ecotourism. We would have um, more par portions of the Restigouche watershed, the Miramichi watershed, uh, would be in protected areas to help protect salmon habitat, to also help um, prevent flooding downstream. Um, we would have more destination areas. Now, the rest, the Rustigouche Wilderness Waterway might be a park, and that would be a new park, one of the first new parks in decades in the province of New Brunswick. And that would be a great tourism draw for that corner of the province that really needs a boost right now. now I'm curious about some uh, groups such as Nature Trust because we often hear announcements about Nature Trust gaining <coughs> more land and protecting more land. And, and I'm wondering how Nature Trust of New Brunswick does fit into this picture. It says it has now more than 6,000 acres or 2,400 hectares of land that's been conserved. Yeah. So is that part of, of this target that you're yes. discussing? <coughs> yes, the, the lands that they're, they're, they're private reserves. They're basically privately owned. <coughs> reserves that um, these organizations like the Nature Trust or the Nature Conservancy of Canada are protecting with willing landowners. But those are always going to be a small portion of the protected areas agenda in New Brunswick just because you have to find the willing landowners who want to do that with their land. And they have to raise the money to be able to buy them uh, or in some way make a, an arrangement with the landowner. So that's a big very important part. It protects significant eco e ecological habitats for endangered species, rare uh, habitats, those kinds of things. It's very important, but they're all it's a drop in the bucket compared to the 7.3 million hectares we have in the province. And if we're going to be thinking about percentage of the province and the proportion of the province that's actually in protection, we do need to have the crown land be 
the, the mainstay of that percentage. We can't rely upon it happening on that, that portion of the land base that's privately owned because so many private landowners have so many other wants and wishes for their lands. And they don't, aren't all going to line up and go, yeah, we all want it to be conserved. We, we want to encourage more of them to do that for sure, but it's, it's a small part of the um, it's getting to the target for sure. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Roberta Clowater is Executive Director of the New Brunswick Chapter of CPAWS, or Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society. It's calling on the province to set aside more land and fresh water as areas protected from development. If you have any thoughts on what you heard, please send us an email, infoamfredericton at cbc.ca, or you can tweet us at infoamfred, or tweet me directly at Colleen Kitts G. You can also call our talkback line, 451-4100, or toll-free, 1-800-561-4222. And you heard Roberta Clowater mention the government. We've asked Rick Doucette, the Minister of Energy and Resource Development, to come on the show at this time tomorrow to respond to the concerns raised by CPOS.